Hello, this is Noreen Crone Findlay from CroneFindlay.com and ToddyTalksCrafts.com. People ask me really on a regular basis, what difference does the size and spacing of the pegs on a peg loom make? And it makes a huge difference. And also about, well, what difference do weaving sticks make with the different sizes? And again, the answer is, woo, it makes a huge difference. So I'm going to just make a little, quick little video that talks about why size matters. And I'll just put my links up here. Sorry, my battery did its usual thing with going flat and shutting itself off. So that's a bit of a rough edit there. Okay, website, not much of a website, it's just a list of these um, links. My blog, that's where it mostly happens, and also the YouTube videos, of course, that's really very important to me and to some people. Etsy, yes, that's where you can go to buy my books, my ebooks, and my patterns. So that's nchromefindlay.etsy.com. Keep in touch with me on Facebook at uh, Noreen Crone Findlay Designs. Okay, I'm going to just edit away from this and uh, start showing you the difference in size and why it matters with weaving sticks. Here we have four little bears. They are the roly-poly um, flat bear pattern that is now on my Etsy shop. And you can see that they, we have four different sizes from two inches up to six inches. And that is because I have used different gauges of yarn and different sizes of weaving sticks. The tiniest roly-poly bear is, was woven on um, a weaving stick from uh, Degrad, uh, I think that's how it's said, or Degrad. Uh, Degrod. Dot. You okay? I'll I'll post the link. Anyhow, uh, wonderful fellow in Britain, steel weaving sticks, and they give you a very fine gauge. So this little bear was woven with sock yarn. This little bear was woven using um, uh, yarn from Briggs and Little, and. It uh, was woven on the quarter inch weaving stick. And now this yarn is uh, a sport weight. It's three ply and it's, uh, you can see we've jumped up by moving from eighth inch weaving sticks up to quarter inch. That increases the size of the finished bear. Same pattern but the size jumps up by using a thicker yarn and a larger weaving stick. Go to the 3 16th inch peg. Now these pegs are from DewberryRidge.com. So now I've moved up again, still using uh, Briggs and Little yarn. Now I've moved up to the 3 16th inch peg and f have gone from the yarn that on, in this one was called Atlantic. This is super and it's a bulky yarn. And now, again, we've moved up one more size. Then go up to the half inch size weaving stick, staying with the super yarn, the bulky yarn, and going up in with the half inch size weaving stick gives you a six inch tall bear. So that you can see the progression of using the thicker uh, weaving stick, uh, a thicker yarn, plus you're going to want to use thicker warp strands in uh, placed in the hole of the weaving stick when you work with the thicker ones because you want the channel filled. So you need to have a fair amount of warp inside the holes that's going to move through the uh, weaving. So that's uh, weaving done on weaving sticks. And I think that's a pretty clear um, example of the difference 
that it makes weaving with different size weaving sticks. Now I'm going to walk around the house and show you a few tapestries that I've woven using weaving sticks. No, excuse me, the peg loom, not weaving sticks. And I want to show you why uh, you want to balance your yarn with the size of uh, weaving stick that you're using in the um, piece that you're working on. And so your, your yarn and the size of peg in your peg loom is really important. This is a tapestry that ha is partially woven on a Mirex uh, tapestry loom, a Saori floor loom, and as well a peg loom. Now the bottom half of it is on the peg loom. You can see that the surface of the weaving, it's all very even, it lies flat, which is exactly what you want. You do not want threads lifting off the surface. Well, these ones do, but they're meant to because they're ruffled. But with your peg loom weaving, you want it to be very even, very smooth, and uh, the number of threads and yarns uh, used uh, and the thickness and weight of them should be in perfect balance with the thickness of the um, of the pegs that you're using on your peg loom because you want a really beautifully finished piece and if you have thread ends uh, or the weft yarn popping out and bubbling up um, it's really it just doesn't give it that beautiful balanced weave that finesse and polish which you really want. Okay another tapestry woven on the peg loom and again you have a flat surface no yarns kind of coming out at you like that and not sort of scribbling around at you Again, it's a combination of working, experimenting to find the combination of yarns to work with in perfect harmony with the pegs of your peg loom. Okay, I'm going to move over to another uh, tapestry woven on the uh, peg loom. Rather than turning off, I'll just scooch along. Okay, again, the you have a flat surface and the phone keeps ringing. Well, okay, I'll be back. Ugh, it was the wrong number. <laughs> okay, um, again, with, um, with this piece, the, I was very careful to experiment and find uh, the perfect balance of uh, the size of the peg and the thickness of the yarn. These ones were all woven with uh, quarter inch diameter pegs and when uh, the yarn, if it starts to look like it's going to be kind of loopy and fruity, I then will add more strands in. And here is another uh, tapestry also, again, woven on the peg loom. And you can see that the balance of the, like the set is excellent because you've got uh, the yarns are lying flat. They're not lifting off the surface and the balance of the set is, now the, this is a very highly textured mohair. So it looks like it's lifting from the surface and it's, but it's not. It is the texture of the yarn itself. And so the, um, the balance between the peg and the yarn is really important and you can only establish that by experimenting and finding what is pleasing to you. Now here, her um, the piece that she's holding in her arms is uh, woven uh, also on the peg loom. The frame of that tapestry uh, was woven on with weaving sticks. So when you are deciding, uh, when you're working on small pieces or large pieces, it's really important to try sampling first. Doing things like, uh, for instance, weaving the little teddy bears to 
find out um, because it's a small piece and most people hate swatching so if you're working with a small piece then you don't mind if you're actually ending up with a finished thing like a teddy bear so you'll learn so much from your uh, from your swatching and sampling and I just can't recommend it highly enough so go for the swatching make yourself something small and fun and you'll find that you learn a tremendous amount but do really pay attention to the how the uh, surface of the weaving looks you want it to look you know very polished and finished and elegant you don't want it being all kind of loopy fruity and schlumpy so happy weaving do swatch please and do enjoy your weaving so happy weaving and i'll be back <laughs>